Welcome and hello everyone. I'm your host, Dr. Zach Harmon, and you are listening to the True Strength Spotlight Podcast, where we are bringing you a collaborative approach to health and fitness. This podcast is for anyone who's interested in optimizing their health and fitness, but with a spin. We bring experts in the health and fitness field and discuss how collaboration with other professionals help optimize the health of the people they work with. All right, here's another True Strength Spotlight series. We've got uh, CrossFit Deco and Leslie Friedman. Um, she joins us today, and she's going to be answering some questions about why um, her CrossFit gym is a little different and why it is a great gym to be a part of. Um, go ahead and briefly give us a, a, a description of kind of um, what your gym's about and a little bit about you as well. Sure. So um, I guess to, to give you my background and how I sort of got to where I am um, with CrossFit and with CrossFit Deco, um, I started in the fitness industry as a personal trainer um, in like a big box gym in New York City. Um, and I got actually a lot of really good training there. Um, and something that was really important that I learned there was the value of having systems in place um, and having a consistent experience for people to walk in, know what they're going to get. Um, I think I didn't quite appreciate it at the time. I probably just thought this is so rigid. But now, being on the other side of it, I really appreciate all the the, the details that they um, put in place in order for people to walk in and feel very taken care of. Um, so when I was in um, the personal training world, I had heard about CrossFit. This was like 11 years ago or so. Wow. Um, yeah. I had heard, Yeah. I can't believe I just said that out loud. Don't tell anyone how old I am. Um, so <laughs> I'd heard about CrossFit. I didn't know much about it. Um, I knew at that time I was sort of getting ready to leave New York and come to Colorado where I had uh, gone to college. And once I got out and I moved to Denver, um, I tried CrossFit. And I believe my first workout in like my introductory class had like a hundred thrusters or something like crazy where I was rendered totally immobile the next day. <laughs> and I was like, yes, there's a whole group of people who are as crazy as I am and I can't wait to go back. Um, that's awesome. And so that's, that's kind of how I experienced it. And did you have you know, that, the reality did you have that, is- Did you have that the, phase where you talked about CrossFit for like a whole month where everyone had to know about it? Cause I feel like I went through that phase when I first started CrossFit too. Um, probably I should probably ask my friends. I'm sure they'd be like, yes, of course you did. But the reality was, you know, I didn't know a lot of people. Um, even though I'd gone to school out here, I was at school in Boulder. So when I moved to Denver, I actually didn't know that many people. And so part of the reason I joined the CrossFit gym was to meet people. And so I surrounded myself with everyone who talked about it just as much as I did. So, gotcha. um, <laughs> but you know, when it, when it came to like the CrossFit methodology and the programming, um, I think the truth was that I had been both, you know, I had been taught to program in a very sort of linear progression and we do five sets of three and then we do four sets of four, whatever it is. And then I started to get creative with my clients and I started to get more creative with my own programming. Um, and I learned about things like box jumps and pull-ups and things that I just hadn't done before yeah. and the intensity piece. And then I realized when I joined a CrossFit gym, like this is kind of how I've already been training myself. Yeah. Um, so it was just a cool um, realization, I guess. Um, but the Olympic lifting portion was totally new to me. Um, I, I look at some old videos and, well, I cringe. You'd probably cringe too. <laughs> understandably. Um, <laughs> well, uh, and then why do you think CrossFit is uh, such a great modality for a lot of people's health? Why do you, why would you, why would someone want to choose CrossFit? Why, why would, it, outside of like an orange theory or, or some of these other things, um, why do you think CrossFit's a little different? So I know this is kind of a cliche answer, but you know, everyone talks about it being infinitely scalable. And I think that there's like more to it than just saying really anyone can do it. I think that the recent events with being, you know, closed down due to COVID and having to completely transform our programming to accommodate people's at-home workouts. People, some people have no equipment. Some people have a single dumbbell or, you know, a jug of milk or whatever. They should probably get a new one throughout this process. But um, 
it's like, it's more scalable than even I realized. Um, so just because we're not in the gym throwing heavy barbells around isn't to say that we're not doing CrossFit workouts at home. And our community is extremely diverse. I mean, we've got at least probably seven to 10 members over the age of uh, 60 and they're joining our virtual classes. I mean, they join regular classes too, but they're participating just as much as some of the younger members that we have. And so I think the fact that, you know, in the right environment, of course, that it can really be this program that um, can accommodate everybody's ability levels and make everybody feel accomplished based on whatever it is, you know, they're trying to do. So, yeah, yeah. that's awesome. And uh, with, with CrossFit, like, I think the thing that I've always enjoyed it from a physical therapy standpoint has been from when I think about anatomy and joint health is the movement variability, right? The mm -hmm. more variety there is, the more I know that their risk of injury is going to be a little bit lower. And that's what I've always really enjoyed about CrossFit where, you know, I'll sometimes get some of my patients who've come to me and they won't know anything about CrossFit. And I'm like, Hey, you should try a CrossFit. Like, is it CrossFit dangerous? <laughs> and I'm like, actually like as crazy as it sounds like recreational running actually, actually has a higher injury risk when it actually measures every thousand hours of training, it actually has a little bit higher. So people are often like very, uh, when I say that they're almost like, what, that can't be right. But just because something has weight doesn't necessarily make it more dangerous. Like body weight, um, exercises to fatigue, such as running can be just yeah. as dangerous if you're not prepared for it. So it's, it's really awesome to see that, uh, it's slowly but surely happening, but seeing people, Older people join the gym, like your community has a, a fair amount of people. You've really done a great job with not uh, to, to educate people about how it's not dangerous. Mm. Um, well, yeah. Yeah, go and, yeah, talk about that a little bit. How do you guys, what, how do you approach that? How do you tell people, uh, talk a little bit about your fundamentals process and maybe some of that Saturday free class? Yeah. Um, yeah, I've, there's the stigma, like it, it's there. I'm not gonna pretend that it's not and say, no, no, everyone, you know, <laughs> no one thinks CrossFit's yeah. dangerous. Yeah, it's, it has <laughs> yeah. been sort of like this, you know, internal battle for years of, do we tell people we're a CrossFit gym or do yeah. we not tell people? But like the bottom line is we're proud of what we do there. We know that we produce a good product that represents CrossFit um, I think in the most positive way, because we come from a really informed place. And that is our, one of our number one goals, or I guess one of our top goals with new members and existing members is to inform them and to educate them and to let them know, hey, we are, you know, aware of some of the um, challenges that people have with high volume or, and here's how we can accommodate you. And here's how it would make sense for you. Um, so as much as, as it's a group training model, we try to make it as individualized and as personalized as possible. And with our fundamentals, so we require everybody who's new to CrossFit to go through our five class fundamentals series, um, which is all personal training. So it's five personal training um, sessions. And we basically just layer on movements, layer on complexity, layer on intensity, um, but starting like with, can you hold a hollow shape? No? Yeah. Okay. Well, then probably kipping is not going to be something that you do for a while, but we're going to show you what it is so you have something to work towards. So yeah. I feel really confident in my coaching staff and their ability to adapt on the spot and to do so in a way that doesn't make somebody feel inadequate or like yeah. they're, you know, lesser than the former college athlete that comes in and is like, sure, I'll try that bar muscle up. Hey, look, I did one, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, and I guess uh, as with all modalities, there, there's no like perfect answer. Do you have any like criticisms or, uh, of CrossFit? or maybe some little things that you like to tweak? And if so, how do you tweak it with your own programming or what do you do to kind of mitigate some of the, the things that you may not like about CrossFit sometimes? So for starters, I love programming. Like I set aside Tuesdays of every week to be my programming days and I like wake up jazzed to do it. And I've been doing this for 
I mean, I've had the gym for over eight years. Like it's my chance to get creative. It's my chance to um, connect with the community. One of the ways I can connect with the community. And um, I, I just love it. Um, <laughs> I kind of nerd out on all the lists I get to make yeah. them off and balance things out and pushing and pulling and upper and lower. And, yeah. um, and, and so I guess to answer your question about a, a criticism I might have of CrossFit in general is I think there's such a heavy emphasis, uh, not as much now as there used to be on the competitive aspect of it. Um, you know, valuing finishing, so f finishing something quickly over doing something well. And um, it's kind of a hard mentality for people to shake because that's also what makes it fun. And it yep. it's what makes it, you know, effective in some ways is if you can maintain good form and have high intensity, like you're going to get it. Both words. Yeah. yeah, totally. But like the reality is that's really hard for people to do without really great body awareness, really great coaching. And even with all that, their form can fall apart. So Especially if they're tired, right? Maybe they had a stressful yeah. month because of COVID, you know, or I maybe mean, they are, knows, yeah, right? there, there's a million things that make people too stressed out, right? Exactly. And so as much as we can keep our eye on everybody as they're working out and like surprisingly, we're able to do so with our Zoom classes, which has been sort of like a, a welcome um, realization. But, you know, we can say, okay, slow it down, or you're going to make these tempo or stop looking at the clock and just move for the next 20 minutes or whatever it needs to be for that person. Um, I feel again, like we're able to really sort of think on the spot and um, adjust someone's intensity or load or volume accordingly. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, what kind of, um, I, I, I've, I've had a pleasure of being at Deco for quite some time. It's yeah. an awesome community and uh, it's very unique. How would you describe that community? Um, how would you put that into some words uh, that so the audience can kind of understand? How great it is yeah so when you actually sent me this question i gave it some some good thought and the three words that came to mind even though there's like 17 more right behind them i'll just <laughs> um i'd say safe genuine and fun yeah um those are great words yeah and the the genuine part is is like the part that especially right now is um, particularly our focus because the, you know, I know one of the questions that we sort of talked about is like, what, what makes Deco unique and in, in how we would describe it is like, we genuinely form these one-on-one -on -one relationships with every single person there. Yeah. And like, it's not just a checking the box. Did I email that person and set some goals? It's like, Hey, how's your mom doing? I know she had surgery or, Hey, I haven't seen you in three days and all the coaches have now pounced on you to come back to class. And, um, I really think that it's a genuine concern and care and investment in our members that really is what sets us apart. Yeah, that's awesome. And I, I, you know, I thought it was really awesome to see not only were you genuine with, um, like you have a community that's genuine. I thought it was pretty genuine during this hard time. You guys uh, gave a discount, discounted rate because you guys couldn't have people in person. I thought yeah. that was really awesome. Um, uh, speak a little bit about, you know, what made you make that decision? Because not every gym, I think, did that. Oh, it was a tough decision. It was a tough decision, but it wasn't. Um, I don't feel right. You know, we we... I don't feel right charging people and not being able to give them the value for what they're paying. And, you know, we are running some, some days we have five Zoom classes, most days we have three, but anywhere from three to five classes per day. Um, but before we closed and in person, we also had strength classes, we had Olympic lifting classes, we had a community class, which we haven't been able to have. You know, there's, there's all these offerings that made up the reason why we charge our the membership rates that we do and it just didn't sit right with me to keep charging people that um it's not you know it's not super sustainable long term but 
you know, that's where me, you know, I as a business owner have to put my thinking cap on and yep. think what, you know, I, I, I guess I saw the longer term picture um, in keeping people feeling taken care of uh, versus having people quit because they couldn't afford yep. their full price. So, and I think uh, trust in your community deepens mm -hmm. when you do stuff like that. I think people yeah. undervalue that as business owners is like, um, yes, it is about numbers. You do want to make money, but there are sometimes those decisions that don't always match up to the, the money side, but long-term it might, right? You might actually have a better outturn. And I thought that was a, a, a great thing that you guys ended up uh, doing for, for your memberships. Um, yeah, that was really cool. Um, so uh, another quick question I wanted to have was like, um, what do you think is so special about your coaching staff? What makes them different? Um, and then you program a lot. Do you program like every, like a lot of boxes might outsource it. I know you don't. Talk about what you do that might be slightly different than what other boxes might do. Did I mention I love programming? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm a nerd. I'm a huge nerd. Um, okay, my coaching staff. Oh, they're phenomenal. They, I mean, the gym would not be the gym without them. Um, you know, I have been able to keep my two um, full-time coaches on staff through this whole thing. And they're, God, they've been instrumental in helping keep the community together. Um, they're coaching classes. They are reaching out to members. They're creating social media. They're um, just super involved. And we're also having regular meetings like once or twice a week, the, the three of us meet and we talk about, you know, uh, future business prospects and, you know, some of that involves corporate wellness and what can we do with our virtual memberships. And so we're always thinking ahead. Um, and they are so super invested in that process and like genuinely excited to be involved in the growth and the evolution of Deco, whatever that is. So I am just like so extremely grateful um, that you know, they get it. You know, we share the vision. And I think that's probably the most important part. Um, that's awesome. And then I guess in terms of programming, um, you know, I really just look to keep it balanced and keep it fun and keep it interesting. Um, I, you know, I think some people would probably want to put a barbell in their hands every single day and, you know, do a hundred snatches, cleans, wow, whatever. Um, I know that's not a good idea. That sounds fun to me too, but I also know that that's not a good method. Um, so I really try to we do a flow day once a week that, that um, we put on a different day every week. And that flow day is designed to be all for quality. Sometimes it's like a bodybuilding focus. Sometimes it's a gymnastics focus. Sometimes it's a core focus. Sometimes it's a cardio focus. So, um, you know, there was sort of this misconception for the first probably six months that we had a flow day. Everyone's like, oh, okay, that's the easy day. That's sort of the throwaway day. And it's like, notoriously no, it? <laughs> everyone the sorest so but i just you know it forces people to take the intensity down and i think it's important to build that in um and Which i think awesome. in terms of um just sort of the general methodology is that i i try to like i said have a balanced program of short and long and heavy and light and medium and um chippers and Imams and all the different styles in there. And, uh, you know, I do draw some inspiration from other programs that are out there as I come across workouts that I think would be fun and adapt them to what's appropriate for our community. Um, and then just try to think, what's the intended stimulus here? And make sure I communicate that with the coaches and with the members. And if I'm doing the workout and if my, you know, 75 year old member is doing it, are we able to achieve the same stimulus? scaling things very differently yeah. so yeah and speak a little bit uh, uh you, you, at, at deco i know this is to be true is you guys ta uh think a little bit more about your warm-ups and cool downs mm -hmm. i think than your average so speak a little bit about what you guys do there and what makes that uh the whole program kind of fit together in one piece um so we have always programmed well i guess i shouldn't say we've always programmed our warm-ups we have always created warm-ups um, and for a long time it was just the coach 
for the day or who started the day would write the warm up for that, you know, the workout that day. Um, so we've always made sure that our warm ups um, are directly related to the movements that we're doing that day. But um, in the last, gosh, it's probably been at least a year since we've been collaborating. Maybe even more, yeah, even more, I think. Maybe even more, oh my God, um, that we've been collaborating with you on um, incorporating what is essentially like group physical uh, therapy into our warm ups to get people's yep. joints and muscles warm and primed. And so we actually call it prevent um, as like, I mean, that's, it's pretty straightforward. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. prevent injury, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's, it's fun because, you know, it introduces people. It kind of is like a sneaky way of getting them to do these, you know, weird uh, movements. Yeah. That, that we never do. Yeah. Yeah. That are exhausting. And they're like, why is this low bear crawl? Like the worst thing I've ever done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. And you guys even do, I, I've been seeing that more with the cool downs. Uh, mm -hmm where you try to get the heart rate down, they're doing breathing, they're doing stuff like that, maybe walking and stuff yep. like that, which is really cool. Yeah, so we'll always, um, you know, especially from home, sometimes in class we run out of time, I'll admit, you know, and that's not the highest priority, but we try to, we try to at least encourage everyone to do the cool down on their own, but while we've been at home, we've been able to do it consistently. Um, yeah, and it's just walk around for 30 to 45 seconds, bring your heart rate down, kind of come back to, you know, somewhat a normal heart rate and um, then a guided stretch, you know, and it's three minutes, but it's just a way to, you know, wrap up the class and to get people to stretch who say they will later. And, <laughs> and they never do. You no, know they don't. <laughs> yeah. I know I don't. <laughs> yeah. The uh, um, uh, one thing I wanted to ask you too, this is the kind of the fun question I always ask is, uh, what's your favorite hero wad? I totally left that blank on your question. <laughs> I, I, I really like, I love a short, intense Grace Isabel because um, I think mentally that's just like, all right, I know I can get back on the bar. I know I can. Oh my God, it's only been 12 reps. I have so far to yeah. go. But um, I love the feeling of accomplishment after that. So you know, I'd say Grace or Isabel, but then I love a long, grueling, you know, grinder of a wad. Uh, I don't even, you know, which, which one comes to mind? This is so. Yeah, yeah um, which one comes to mind? Bull. Okay. You know that one, right? Like, I'm not a runner. Why would I choose something that has two miles? I was going to ask you. I was like, uh, that would be the last one I think you would choose. I know, but there's pull-ups and overhead squats, so there, there we go. Me happy, so I, I have to find balance somewhere. Do you uh, <laughs> do you use any of them as benchmarks? I know some gyms will use certain ones as benchmarks. Or do you guys p uh, pick any particular ones to use as benchmarks? Um, not any ones in particular. I, I try to sprinkle them throughout the year, so because people like to know kind of where they stand with exactly. those. Exactly. Um, you know, we will retest, but it, it's not as um, methodical of a retesting process as I used to do with our programming because I found that um, if we would retest you know eight weeks later people didn't show up because number one they still remembered how terrible it was the first time <laughs> and number two they were afraid that they would not Score improve lower yeah, yeah exactly and so it's like well then who if, cares <laughs> yeah if the community doesn't like it the community why yeah. keep it in exactly yeah um and then kind of just for people like, I know the student physical therapists, I also know some gym owners who are new to this might listen to this. Um, briefly describe kind of our collaboration, what it's, what it's been helpful with, uh, how would you, and how, how has that been uh, instrumental with some of your members with injuries or, or, or uh, nagging injuries, right, that they've had yeah. to deal with? Well, for starters, how we met is because I came to see uh, Dan Pope, who you were, you were doing your final clinical rotation. Clinical yeah. rotation. Thank you. I was going to say apprenticeship. Sounds yep. very, very cool. Um, and um, I was in there for a herniated disc in my neck, which is sort of like a, uh, yeah. Anyway, so I went to him and you were pretty much the one who worked on me um, every time. And so we just kind of got to know each other. And I know when you graduated, um, Dan said, you know, 
I really think Zach would be a great fit in your community. And um, he's, he, he eventually wants to start his own practice. Uh, maybe knows that isn't going to happen right away, but you know, so we met and we said, let's, let's do it. Um, yeah. I had great experience with you. I, your passion is evident. Um, and, and so it's been this like cool evolution because, you know, the reality is like, I'm not a physical therapy expert. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a lot of things. And so why would I feel like I can provide all that information or even my coaches? Like there are experts out there and I would rather have a trusted resource, an expert to send people to and, and keep that collaboration going um, and continue making people feel special and taken care of and important and um, prioritized. And I think that's what's so cool about our collaboration is that, you know, you'll see members and of course with, with their um, approval, you communicate back to our coaching staff, what's going on with them, what are their limitations, what, what can they do, what can't they do, what's going on with them kind of in a mental, you know, from a mental yeah, standpoint. That happens too. Yeah, what's their mental block? And maybe it's not physical, so we can push them a little bit. And so there's just a lot of valuable information that we don't have the the chance to or the expertise to collect from them. Um, not to mention you get them better, you know, <laughs> that's, yeah. But yeah, yeah, there's that. But um, I really think it's kind of all the other stuff that has been so unique. Um, yeah, yeah, and do you think uh, from a marketing standpoint, like, is there any value that people will take advantage of like have you ever had anyone like I, I know jim's asking me all the time like does it actually improve marketing value like when you say you have someone on site do people value that yes 100 percent. and every single new member that comes in you know we give them your information we put them in touch with you hey zach offers a free consultation we highly recommend it even if you have no previous or existing injuries like just get in there and make sure that you're squatting balanced in both feet and yeah. you know that you can turn your head all the way yeah you know, but <laughs> <laughs> you're not that good <laughs> um and, and no i think it is incredibly valuable yes yeah awesome yeah. um yeah the uh i i'll speak a little bit about me meeting leslie it was uh it was awesome to get to know her as a student and then be able to evolve into a practicing physical therapist. And I wasn't always working full time on my own thing. I, I had a full time gig and did the part time thing for a while, but it was really cool to have someone take a chance on me. She was the first gym to ever try this on site thing. So kudos to Leslie to even being open to a weird business model that wasn't really in existence at all. Yeah. Um, at the time, like there was just not that many PTs who did that. Now it's a little bit more common um and at least in the denver area when i was when i was starting but uh yeah at, now it's involved into more of uh a, a true collaboration a more genuine collaboration between now it's not just i talk to leslie i'll talk to maddie i'll talk to amy uh, whenever they ask me questions um especially even about their own injuries right i mean maddie's been mm -hmm. dealing with with her foot and uh it's been really cool to be a part of the community uh that's that I've seen grown so much too now that you guys have really systemized uh, how you guys make the highest value possible for your for your membership base yeah um, it's it remarkably changed in a good way from mm -hmm. when I first started yeah yeah <laughs> yeah which is really cool um, last question I have uh, before yeah. we kind of wrap this up um, what's uh, what's kind of uh, what's your next you know two three years maybe look like uh, for CrossFit Deco um, any, anything, uh, exciting on, on the, on the going forward thing? Man, right now, isn't that such a loaded question? Um, I know it's like, ask me this three months ago, my answer would have been, I'm sure very different, but, um, like I said, we've, we've seen a lot of like really great success with our online platform that I never had any intention of developing, but you know, here we are forced forced to have it. Um, and so I really think that that's sort of going to stick around, you know, if not for a long time, maybe indefinitely, I don't know. Um, so I definitely see that as being a part of our business model for a while. Um, and 
It's a good question. You know, this whole thing has just taught me that you can't ever get too comfortable. And I also, you know, Zach, you and I were talking about this before the interview, but like, there's kind of this cool opportunity to take this time and go, okay, well, what can I do differently? And how can I do yeah. it better? And what's working instead of we're allowed to reopen and we're just going to go exactly back to the way things were because yeah, yeah. there were a lot of flaws in what, in what we were doing from a business standpoint. So I actually kind of see this as a, as a really awesome opportunity to, to get creative. Um, so I have some fun things in the works. Um, yeah, that's a great mindset. Yeah. Great yeah. mindset. Um, and then if, uh, if anyone wanted to get in contact with you, whether it's just a talk or a possibly drop in for a class or even do online class with you yeah. uh, with, with CrossFit Deco, how would they do that? Any contact info you'd want to shoot them towards? Sure. Um, they can just reach out to me directly. It's Leslie at CrossFitDeco.com. Um, we are offering this virtual membership for it's unlimited. Come to as many Zoom classes as you want. You'll get um, goal setting with coaches. You'll get our regular check-ins where we won't leave you alone. Um, and, you know, you get to really be a part of the community. We actually had two people join our gym this week. Um, and one of them had never done CrossFit. And so we're doing a virtual fundamentals with her. Where it's, it's a slightly condensed version. So we're not obviously doing any Olympic lifting or gymnastics on the bar or anything, but we're getting her through um, shapes and progressions of squats and how to use odd objects. And it's, you know, we've evolved that program too. So we are offering that and our, um, our virtual membership is a hundred dollars a month. So I would love to have more people join yeah. the community and, you yeah. know, when we reopen eventually our, our real community. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, thank you for taking the time. Uh, this is yeah. another series on True Strength Spotlight. Um, thank you so much, uh, Leslie. I uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. This has been another episode of True Strength Spotlight. Thank you for tuning in to hear our take on helping people get the most out of their health and fitness. And thank you again, Leslie Friedman of CrossFit Deco. We loved having you. If you want to visit her, you can go to CrossFitDeco.com. If you want to know more about True Strength Performance and Rehab, where we help individuals build true strength both in body and mind, go to TrueStrengthRehab.com.